There's an odd creepiness to being alone in a game, more specifically being alone in an older game, even if it's not the game's original intention to be scary. The first time I ever noticed something like this was playing Super Mario 64 with my brother when we were both little, and I'd have to complete certain sections by myself when he wasn't home. Eventually, all of these giant rooms and long hallways and these polygons doing their best to construct something that looked kid-friendly, eventually they all started to seem off and I'd have to stop playing. I'd have bad dreams of scary things happening on my television screen and I wouldn't be able to turn my console off. I'm sure the game room being in the basement didn't really help things either, as far as the creepiness factor. Still, the games had an isolation to them that was particularly unique to the video game medium. There's those subtle feelings, those things we can't quite explain, and at the time, I couldn't really explain why this was so scary. And I know themes like this have already been explored largely with things like creepypastas and other scary stories online. Still, I think there's a lot of room for exploring this in the video game medium, even with games like Doki Doki Literature Club and Pony Island. They never really tapped into that same kind of niche scary that I and probably a lot of other people felt when they were little and playing games by themselves. So, what makes the video game I'm about to talk about any different from all of the other entries in the horror genre that have already been out there for a while. No Players Online taps into that isolation feel and video gamey styled creepiness more than other titles by taking place inside the dead servers of an old first person shooter. This isn't just you running through the woods from a knife wielding sociopath or something preconditioned to be scary. This was a normal first person shooter game that gets a lot of its atmosphere from the emptiness of its world and the lack of other players, forcing you to pay attention to creepy minute details, like the hissing of an old TV or the wind that you hear when first starting up the game. If you've played Halo 1 on PC towards the end of its multiplayer life, you'll probably know exactly what this feels like. It starts off simple enough and stays that simple for its entire 10 minute runtime. After selecting a server to join from the main menu, which just brings you to the same map and objective every single time, you'll be tasked with bringing a flag from one side of the map to the other, and since there aren't any players to oppose you, it'll be easy peasy. Tracking back and forth with a flag by yourself with no opposition would make for a pretty mundane horror game though, so on your way back the first time around, you'll start to hear some creepy music and stumble upon an old record player. Shooting it will stop it from playing, but with the sound effect that happens afterwards, it's easy to think you've done something horribly wrong. <laughs> Pressing on with your mission, as it's the only thing to do, you retrieve the enemy flag again for the second time, only now, someone has joined the game. Looking carefully, you'll see a black fragment out the corner of your eye, but at one point it takes figure and comes right at you in what I can only describe as a lesson in shitting yourself. Shadowy figures aren't anything new to horror games for sure, but I think it's used to good effect here, especially when it seems to clip like an old FPS might. After your encounter with the shadowy figure, you'll start to get messages from a user named John Dev. He explains that this video game is actually some elaborate project to resurrect his dead wife that he's been working on for 11 years. He warned you that if you deliver that last flag, the servers of the game will shut down and he won't ever be able to bring his wife back to life. Tracking to the flag a final time makes the screen fade to white, and after which, the game ends. And that's it. Just ten minutes of weird horror. Heck, even re-downloading the game and trying to play it again just shows a blank server list. There are some neat easter eggs, though. Entering the Contra code on the server select screen will bring the servers back along with a funny sound effect. And leaving the server after planting two flags and then going on to gain yet another two flags will prompt John to ask you to leave them alone. An eye will take form on the perimeter of the map and shooting it does something really odd. I'll just show you.
Whatever that's supposed to mean. While it indulges in some horror tropes, I would very much like to see this made into a full-on game. It's touching on a very specific set of fears that a lot of us kind of already felt in games that weren't even supposed to invoke this. With a lot of Game Jam submissions having already gone on to become full games, I think no players online should definitely follow suit. As a proof of concept, I think the developers of this game, Paper Cookies, knocked it out of the park. Let's see something more sizable with different maps, different kinds of scares, and an evolving story around John and his late wife. 